Welcome. My name is Linda Tierney, and today I have with me Andreas Moritz. Andreas is the author of four books, The Amazing Liver Cleanse, It's Time to Wake Up, Freedom from Judgment, and The Key to Health and Rejuvenation. Andreas, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And today we're going to be focusing on mostly the book, The Amazing Liver Cleanse. Yeah. What can you tell us about your background? Um, I was born in Germany in 1954, and uh, my life was very bumpy to begin with because I suffered major illnesses such as juvenile rheumatoid arthritis, and uh, I fainted every couple of weeks you know, in the middle of um, you know, places like church or post offices, and I had chronic headaches, chronic constipation, uh, severe gastrointestinal problems, and arrhythmia. Uh, as a child, uh, so I I was suffering so much that I had to look uh, for problems to these solutions, you know, to these problems, uh, solutions to these problems, uh, quite from an early childhood uh, stage onward. So your interest and in health was based yes. upon a need, an old personal yes, need. Yes, yes. Uh, doctors couldn't help me, um, so traditional doctors uh, failed to do anything about it. It never disappeared. In fact, it got worse. So gradually I had to dig up uh, old books which I found in my mother's library and, and she, she was always very interested in that. At what age did you start your I started, own search? I started to look at these things from age 12. Wow. Um, I um, studied the digestive system at age 12 and I was fascinated by that because it gave me so many clues about my problems and once I started shifting, changing my diet and uh, some of the things I was doing uh, you know, to cause all those problems, uh, they disappeared and um, I gradually discovered you know, um, ways to health which would be applicable to a lot of people as well. Great. And now could you tell us about the liver, the function of the liver and the importance of cleansing the liver? Yes, uh, the liver is, of course, one of the major organs in the body, and uh, it's the factory, the most important factory, which is not just producing enzymes for the digestive system, cleansing the blood, but it regulates basically the entire metabolism, uh, distribution of energy throughout the body. Um, if there's anything wrong in the body, you can always you know, relate it back to the liver. And that's what I found in my research. I've been working in this field for 32 years, and I have not found a single a terminal illness which, um, where people didn't have congestion, severe congestion in the liver bile ducts. That's what amazed me when I read the book, is that so many diseases were related to the liver. Yes. I had no idea. Yes, yes. and um, that, that's something, of course, that uh, I've learned over the course of many, many years where people have been cleansing their livers, uh, their bile ducts in particularly, particular, um, they found that these problems disappeared as they were continuing you know, to cleanse their liver. And of course I emphasize other things as well, not just cleansing the liver, because um, if you eat foods which have a very congesting effect, then uh, that can cause more congestion again in the liver and of course in the other organs of elimination such as the kidneys and the colon foremost of all. Mm -hmm. And you suggest uh, colonics uh, before and after the liver cleanse absolutely, is very important. Absolutely, um, because you know when you clean the liver and uh, I will show a couple of pictures later on if that's okay, um, there are so many stones coming out and they pass, of course, through the gastrointestinal system. So they come out through the large intestine. And um, people who have unclean colons, they will you know, harbor some of these stones that come out and they, hold, they are held back. And that, of course, um, causes uh, you know, some infection in some cases or it can just make you feel unwell because these toxins and these bacteria are going around the system over and over and that can cause some side effects. And these stones that come out of the liver are very toxic, so when they get stuck toxic. in the colon, that's bad news. Yes, you can yeah. tell that from uh, smelling uh, stones when they come out. Most of these stones, that float in the toilet. You can look at them, you can take them out if you like, 
um, um, the color is like um, this here, is in, you know, the green leaves, uh, bright green color, and some of them are very, very dark. Uh, they can be black, they can have um, some are whitish, beige, but whatever they are, they are quite toxic because um, when the liver is blocked, when, it's, when these bile ducts are congested, then the liver is unable to remove its, its toxins properly, and the liver is the foremost detoxifying organ and it filters you know, the blood at a, you know, constantly. So um, every time you have some toxins retained in the liver, they attach themselves uh, to the bio, you know, stones, to these bile clots or gold stones. Um, and that, of course, is a great disadvantage because the liver you know, has to stop doing that work. And some of these toxins keep circulating throughout the body and they get deposited in other areas such as uh, connective tissues which um, the tissue making up every soft you know, uh, organs uh, even the harder tissues like bone tissue so you can have joint problems you can have uh, severe lymphatic congestion after that and then you have water retention and you put on weight uh, so most of the people who have weight excessive weight uh, in the body they have uh, toxins deposited in various areas of the body, which means that um, in order to keep them neutral, at least for the time being, the body has to hold on to water. Water is a neutralizing agent. And so they hold on to a lot of uh, extra weight. And I think it's fat, but it's only very little fat. Most of it is water or lymph congestion, you know, lymph fluids. So a person then by cleansing their liver uh, could lose a lot of water weight absolutely, then. Absolutely. When the liver is clean, it is very difficult to um, be overweight. <laughs> oh, oh, it's great. very, very difficult because metabolism is at its normal range. Uh, the digestive ability, which is uh, controlled by the liver, is increasing. So this, the, the same food which might have caused you to gain weight before, after your liver is clean, will you know, mean that you can actually uh, get energy from that food uh, rather than you know, convert it into fat or um, waste products. And so your body is getting cleaner and cleaner and it loses that waste and that water which is keeping these toxins neutral. Great, great news for a lot of people. Absolutely, absolutely. And it's, it's not just about losing weight mm -hmm. because many people say, I just want to lose weight so I look better. But having extra weight means th the digestive system is not functioning properly, and that's the harbinger of major illnesses in the future. Um, most cancers, um, which I you know, have studied and researched, they are, are related to you know, problems in the digestive system. And you know, I could you know, go a little bit into, that, you know, into details of that, because it's such a common um, you know, illness today, cancer yes. and heart disease. All those diseases which we commonly refer to, they are uh, basically uh, diseases of congestion. And liver plays the, the foremost role in that. Once the liver is congested, then all the other organs can start to uh, get blocked up as well. So it sounds like anyone with um, a disease could really benefit, or, or if they're overweight, they could really benefit from a liver cleanse. How about your person who's feeling very healthy, could they also benefit from cleansing the liver? Absolutely. Um, there's you know, always a need for more energy, um, better sleep, um, just feeling better about oneself, about one's emotional health, because what I found over the years, those who have clean, cleansed their liver and they don't have any gold stones left in the bile ducts of their liver, they also don't get angry anymore. And that's a great, um, wonderful you know, characteristic to have, uh, to always be at peace with oneself and one's, you know, and one's surroundings and other people. Um, because goldstones, they block the bile flow. And uh, it is known you know, in traditional medicine, even people saying you have a bileless nature. It's you're angry, you, the, the bile is overflowing. It can't actually uh, leave the liver, it's, it's, it's trapped. And once something is trapped in the body, you feel trapped, and that's frustration. And the frustration builds up, and it turns into anger. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of uh, emotional benefit from cleansing the liver. Yes, and I have gone on three liver cleanses since yes. I talked to you in January. And um, 
It is amazing. I also, being a colon hydrotherapist, I see a lot of people coming in uh, getting colonics who have gone on this liver cleanse also. And a lot of us, uh, well, myself and others, have do experience some anger feelings yes. right directly after the liver cleanse. And I just find that fascinating. In fact, one woman reported crying all afternoon, mm. you know, and it just seems to be the very related to yes. the emotions. Yes. Yes, emotions are not really uh, stuck in the body as such. They are stuck in the, uh, in the blockages, uh, like the gallstones uh, in the liver or, the, or kidney stones in the kidneys cause f a lot of fear. So once you uh, put people on kidney cleanses, which is another important uh, thing to do uh, in life, as you, you eat certain foods and uh, you live in a polluted environment and uh, you get stressed over things. After a while, you start, you know, collecting these items uh, in the body, and they are not really um, useful items. They uh, they don't belong in the body, and because they don't belong in the body, they are foreign, and and the body gets afraid if you ha if you have blockages. The body is a circulatory uh, mechanism, basically. It's a process. The body is not a fixed, frozen sculpture where you can take things out and put new things in um, without you know, feeling the emotional drainage uh, from that. So if people have uh, fear in their lives, you can bet that uh, their kidneys are, are not functioning that well. And if when they clean them out, then uh, fear can release, you know, be released as well. And maybe they are uh, releasing, you know, being even afraid after a cleanse like that. But that doesn't happen too often. And uh, it's very short. Yes, you know, it's it just like a day short. of noticing some angry feelings coming yes. up that were very unusual. It's like, and I know this has got to be related. And afterwards, you feel so much better. Yes, yeah. yes. Now, in this book, uh, The Amazing Liver Cleanse, you also um, ha have a recipe for kidney yes, bladder cleanse. There's a kidney bladder cleanse in there. Um, that releases actually, or not, it doesn't release the stones as such, it dissolves the stones and that's very important for the kidneys because you don't want to release, flush them out like in the, uh, through the gallbladder or the liver uh, because you know, that is fairly painless uh, if it happens in the liver but um, you don't want to flush out stones because they can get stuck in these tiny ureter uh, ducts and that can cause lower back pain, which incidentally is um, mostly related to uh, crystals breaking free from the kidneys and uh, getting stuck in the ureter walls and causing rupturing in that area. And that is very painful. So you, there are so many, uh, millions of uh, people in this country yes. who have low back pain. And low back pain is su such a uh, easy thing to clear if you know where it comes from. but. Um, Many people have to, you know, they have operations for these kind of things, and there's no relief for that. Or they just suffer with lower back pain for years and years yes. and years. Like I did, you know, mm -hmm. I had chronic low back pain. Um, so uh, until I really cleared out my system, um, I was, I had all those pains everywhere. I had 40 gallbladder attacks before I uh, managed to find ways to clear these gallstones painlessly, effortlessly, basically from the liver and gallbladder. And I passed three and a half thousand stones. And uh, you know, as a little boy, I know I had uh, gallstones from age six. Um, you know, my uncle, who was a leading iridologist, um, iridology is the science of eye interpretation. Uh, you look a person into, th into the eyes, and you can see in the structure of the iris uh, changes that occur uh, in a person's organ systems or um, you know, in, in, in the circulation or wherever in the body and they show up in the eyes and you can see discoloration or structural changes. And uh, so he saw straight away and he said, you have stones in the liver. And at that time, of course, uh, medicine had no clue that there could be stones in the liver. Today they are called intrahepatic stones, um, but they're rarely recognized. Uh, so doctors don't look for them. They're rarely recognized and extremely common, as I understand Extremely it. common. It's one of the most common things. And as I've seen thousands and thousands of uh, people with all kinds of illnesses, um, from very simple things, um, pain, pain in the knee. <laughs> people never associate with the liver, but it's very closely related to the liver. Um, 
so when when uh, the stones are cleared and the liver, you know, the pain in the knee disappears, um, you know, it's it's a it's a wonderful thing for the person who suffers from these kinds yes. of problems because you know he can't walk properly and obviously it's just a knee, you know, it's out there, but it has nothing to do with what's happening in here, but it has. And that, that's something that only comes with experience, seeing people, uh, taking them on these cleanses, uh, changing their diet, uh, so it's uh, really supporting their psychophysiological body type, um, their particular needs. Uh, the ability to digest depends um, on the liver function, of course, and that's hardly ever been uh, discussed in a doctor's office, unfortunately. Mm. Well. Um Cleansing the liver is so inexpensive and really very easy. Yes. Could you talk like uh, they need liver cleanses? It's not just a one-time thing. Could you go into that? Yes. Uh, of course, you you have. Um, maybe I can even show a picture sure. you know, of um, stones that are so it makes it more practical. Um, this is the liver, and if if you can focus on that, there are tiny, tiny bile ducts, which are you know, in the liver cells, or li they're surrounding the liver cells. So the liver cells produce bile, which is an alkaline substance. It's green, and it co co contains 90. It's you know, basically made of cholesterol, 95 percent, and there are some bile salts and bile pigment, uh, bilirubin. Uh, there are some other uh, substances. Uh, as well, and water, of course, and uh, other salts. And these cells, they produce this, the bile and pass it into larger bile ducts until the bile is coming out of the liver and is moving into the gallbladder. And from there, once food has moved into the stomach and it's ready to pass into the first section of the small intestine, the gallbladder is squeezing the bile into the small intestine. And that's where the main digestion takes place. That's where you, you, when the food is coming through into the small intestine, you need the bile in order to raise the pH value um, from acidic food content to a more alkaline food content. And then the pancreas here can release pancreatic enzymes, which are needed to break down the food into the smaller possible comp components like fructose, glucose, vitamins, hormones, um, basic. Um, Trace minerals. So basically, all all of the all this process can only take place when your bile flow is appropriate. If you don't make enough bile, which most people nowadays don't, um, instead of making a quart and a, and a half of bile a day, most people make just a cupful. And why? What makes it so they're not making enough bile? Because of the blockage of the bile ducts. Okay. Are these biles? clots or gallstones, they block the bile flow so there's not enough bile coming out. And of course, sometimes you have also gallstones in the gallbladder that doesn't give uh, the gallbladder enough space to accommodate the bile coming in from the liver. And that would mean that uh, when the food comes through, you don't have enough bile. And bile is so essential for See most what came out of you and how much you could harbor in this organ, uh, which is on the right side of your body. Um, it's a very large organ, and in fact, most people think, well, it's just a little organ, but it's uh, huge. About how much does it weigh? It, um, a couple of pounds and uh, two and a half pounds, um, so it's, it's very large, and it can weigh a lot more if you have a lot of stones sitting right. there. Right. <laughs> um, so you it want it to expands, weigh about two pounds. It spans the entire width you know, of the um, uh, you know, higher abdomen. So it's very, very large, and this is a, a very good picture to show, you know, basically the proportions. And if the liver is blocked, often it expands, it becomes large, and it affects the breathing, so that it presses on the diaphragm, and then the diaphragm doesn't have the opportunity to um, go lower, and so you don't get enough breath. And so a lot of breathing difficulties come from uh, congestion in the liver. Um, there are many other problems, like you know, in, in your case, when you clean out people's colons. If the liver is blocked, you don't digest food properly. Your digestive ability is so little that you start clogging up your lower you know, intestines, and that's where colon problems come from. So colon problems are di directly related to impaired liver function. 
uh, and then these kind of no, you know, uh, deposits of waste matter, they uh, sit there in the colon uh, walls, they get attached to the colon walls, and uh, that can cause obstruction in the colon, sometimes even spastic uh, colon, which is a contraction of the colon. And when that happens, everything that is moving downward, the food moving downward and uh, some uh, waste products which are generated from uh, you know, parts of the foods which couldn't be digested, they get stuck here. In, in some cases this is called constipation, but many people they have regular bowel movements and they still have a waste retention. And it's like a dam that is created there. And uh, there's a back, backing up uh, of, of a lot of waste which then actually moves up through the small intestine and it can move up into the stomach it can come up through, yeah, through into your throat area, and I have had honestly, I've uh, seen people who brought up fecal matter from the mouth, wow. and uh, usually that's associated with very bad breath. People, a lot of people have bad breath, and it's um, something that is not very uh, nice. Well, by um, that time, they are very sick very anyway. Blocked, very, very sick. Blocked, yeah. Yes. And th that can be released um, quickly, like with the colonic, um, and of course through the liver cleanses and cleaning out the body like that, and then taking care of some very easy uh, dietary measures. Um, because a lot of people, they eat foods which they are so intolerant to that the body is just fighting it and is losing its strength and its power, and it uh, gets even more and more blocked because. Uh, what happens if you don't digest food properly, your entire lymph system gets blocked up. And that's another subject um, which you know, you know, we could go into a little bit right. um, because it's fascinating. It relates to so many health problems. The and lymph system is also very key to yes, good health. It is. And the lymph system is again related to liver function. If the liver doesn't work properly and if you don't have enough bile flow, you get lymph congestion and the lymph congestion is uh, taking place mostly here in the central part of the small intestine. That's where you have, I have got a diagram actually of the lymphatic uh, system. I've got a pic couple of pictures also of gallstones uh, to look at in a minute. Okay. Um, if you, you can focus on that for a moment. Um, we have tiny lymph ducts in the body, everywhere, like in the hands, in, in this case here, or in the feet. And these lymph ducts, they are parallel to the blood vessels. And these lymph ducts, they drain the connective tissue, that tissue which surrounds the cells from metabolic waste. Every single cell in the body receives nutrients and has to release metabolic waste. At the same time, you have 60 to 100 trillion cells in the body. And every day you turn over about 30 billion cells. That means you have to create 30 billion new cells and you have to destroy 30 billion old cells. And when you destroy 30 billion old cells, you have to remove them. And if you don't remove them properly, and the lymph system is in charge of that, then you have localized congestion. And if that is building up, then you develop diseases, what we call disease. Mm -hmm. But it's basically just a blockage. And uh, the lymph system is such a powerful system. It's um, working all over the body, and it's every part of the body is connected with every other part in the body through the lymphatic system. So it's a huge network which, for example, drains the fingers. So all the waste, the metabolic waste, and the uh, dead cells, cellular debris, um, damaged cells are removed through that, and they're passed on into lymph nodes, and these lymph nodes detoxify this lymph fluid with all that debris and those toxins. And as they are reaching this area here in the central part of the body, and that's basically where all that goes, and it ends up in these uh, sacs, and they're called cisterna chili. So these lymph sacs, or cisterna chili, they are making sure that every toxin is being cleared. Uh, there's a lot of 
um, immune activity there, so there are lots of immune cells and they're destroying any harmful uh, substances there. And then afterwards, this, this lymph fluid is moving up in this duct, in this green duct. Most of it is moving up in this green duct. And it moves right up to your throat and it moves into the left side of the heart, into the blood circulation again. Um, so once, if you have a blockage here in this cisterna chili, and remember, this is exactly where your digestive system is located. So if you don't digest food properly, then these, these lymph sacs that get overtaxed, they start filling up with a lot of toxins from the un undigested foods, particularly proteins. Undigested proteins are called degenerate proteins. They're damaged, they're not useful for the body. But they thicken the lymph fluid. They make it very thick, like gel-like and then it congests the lymph flow mm -hmm. and that's where the major problems occur. So then there is a blockage occurring all the way up in the thoracic duct and that means the side ducts which try to empty their waste from different parts of the body, they can't do that anymore. Then you have localized disturbances. For example, um, breast cancer is related to lymph congestion in the lymph nodes of the breast glands. Okay, that's mm -hmm. basically what uh, is responsible for the breast cancer. Wow, and that's very common. Yes, nowadays. very common. And when I trace it back, uh, when someone comes to me and has breast cancer, and I can trace it back exactly to congestion in the abdomen, uh, in the you know where the belly button is, mm -hmm. and basically there is an, there's a swelling there. And uh, that means it's swollen up uh, to a point like a balloon shape and it's causing so much congestion here that there is no flow. There's no flow of lymph in the thoracic duct. That means you have localized congestion here. So what happens is that the, loc the, the cells in the breasts, for example, uh, they can't release their metabolic wastes because there is no more drainage. So they have to hold on to the metabolic waste. And as they do that, they surround themselves with these toxic substances. After a while, there's no more oxygen coming in there. And when the oxygen can't come in there, then the cells have to mutate. That means they turn cancerous. Right. And uh, if, you give, if you gave them oxygen, they would either die or they would again turn into friendly cells. Wow. And so the lymph system is responsible for keeping that um, nourishment steady and fluent. So that makes sure that you always have enough oxygen coming in there. But if the lymph system is blocked right down here, then you will eventually have a blockage up here. Great. And I do want to, I think... Um, it's, for me, it has been a, a great experience uh, seeing people with every kind of... Illness. And so what I found... Um, more and more that there are no illnesses as such. Disease is, um, in my point of view and from my experience, a survival mechanism that the body is you know, um, creating in order to um, prevent something worse from happening than already has happened. Uh, so when I look at cancer, I don't look at it as a vicious disease. I look at it as a very powerful um, last-minute survival mechanism. And what it does actually, uh, the cancer prevents these toxins which are trapped in the tissues. Um, it starts to dissolve some of them. Uh, it starts to neutralize them. And it's like you, you know that uh, cancer cells, they live off lactic acid, for example, which is produced, it, it's a byproduct of metabolism. It's a waste product which can be extremely harmful if it keeps staying in healthy tissue. And so the cancer cells, they devour it. They live of it. They make energy from it. And so they take it out of that surrounding. And there are some other uh, extremely poisonous substances which cancer cells uh, neutralize. So, so the cancer is actually preventing these toxins from going into the bloodstream, which could cause septic poisoning and kill the person in three days' time. So, whereas wow. the cancer um, uh, allows you to live um, some, you know, sometimes for years. Yeah. Um, of course, you, you have the opportunity then during that time 
to clean out your liver, <laughs> uh, make sure that it's completely clean. That improves your digestion. Your lymph flow is uh, guaranteed that you have proper lymph drainage from every part of the body, and the swelling, wherever it is, in lymph nodes will start to go down, and that helps to um, you know, remove the, the metabolic waste again from the cells, from the cellular areas, and uh, free the cells, and the cells can again breathe, breathe oxygen rather than um, you know, other, other waste products. So the problem with the, a clogged lymph starts with the, the, um, yes. the liver yes. being blocked. Yes. Yes, and you see most people when they talk about weight gain, you know, they get, where does it start? It starts right here, under the belly button. Yeah. So that's right. where you complain and say, oh, I'm putting on a, you know, a tummy here. <laughs> and, uh, red alert, yes, actually. It should yes. be a red alert for And someone. that should be the first sign, uh, that should be the first sign of malfunctioning digestive system and liver function. And uh, if that is noted by a person, then uh, he would you know, look for ways to uh, clear that. And it's so easy to do. And I, I would be so happy if uh, this technique and the liver cleanse would go into the hospitals um, where people could uh, recover so much more quickly right. from all sorts of illnesses. And I've seen it. I'm receiving on a daily basis uh, hundreds of messages from all over the world. And people who are... Um, claiming it saved their lives, uh, they don't have the cancer anymore, they have recovered from heart and disease. Their heart actually, after having had a heart attack, completely recovered and there's no sign of damage uh, after they have cleansed their liver. Wow. And this is remarkable. So uh, there are millions of people dying from heart disease uh, and it's totally needlessly. unnecessary, needlessly. Yes. Now tell us um, how many different liver cleanses would a person need to go on? How would they know when they're done, when their liver is cleansed? Well, obviously, um, you know, the liver is only clean when there are no more stones coming out. Um, so I would go that far. Um, there are people who have uh, done, you know, six cleanses and their liver was clean. Uh, then there were other people, uh, like myself, I had to do 12, but I had so many stones. Um, not that that is something rare, but a lot of people have that kind of uh, number of stones. Um, but then someone just, um, very, you know, uh, a partner, actually my partner passed uh, very large gold stones after, during the ninth cleanse. And uh, I have a picture here, and it's quite fascinating. Um, some of these stones, they, they look like that, uh, if you can zoom in there. Uh, these are green, typical green stones that come out of the liver. Um, some of our beige uh, color. Uh, this is a calcified stone, which is um, partially calcified. That exists only in the gallbladder. So also the gallbladder stones are coming out when you do the liver cleanse. These are a mixture of different kinds of stones that came out through one elimination. And so there's some green in there, there's some beige in there, some reddish uh, pink ones. Um, and then this is a gallbladder here, which is completely packed with wow. stones and it uh, had to be you know, removed. Um, but I had uh, many, many people who had that, that kind of situation. So a person could have that many gallstones in their liver, but it wouldn't have to be removed. No, they could go no. on a yes, cleanse. Yes, yes. And, my liver and was, lose it uh, that my way. gallbladder was packed completely. And it was constantly overflowing, so I had these kinds of stones coming out involuntarily, and they got trapped in my bile duct. Whereas when you do the liver cleanse, you don't feel them coming out. They're painlessly, because um, there's a lot of bile coming out, and bile is very, very oily. So it, um, it, they come out like you know, pulling out a ring from the finger. Uh, when you put oil on it, it just comes up very easily. What are Plus, these stones made out of? So this particular one is uh, a gallstone typically coming from the gallbladder, not from the liver. The liver ones are um, basically green ones, which we have just shown before. So um, they're dark green or sometimes a lighter green and um, sort of beige color. This one is uh, totally calcified, and that's what my partner released at her ninth cleanse. And this was about uh, two and a half inches. Uh, Wow. long and about one and a half inches wide. 
And when that came out, um, it just passed out basically painlessly, but it felt like a proper bowel uh, movement. And uh, when I took it out and I looked at it, and I, I, I re- you know, dissected it, um, and it was completely calcified, so I cut it into p- two pieces. And the smell that this kind of stone emanates is uh, unbelievable. You would have, you would have never smelled something like that before. Um, it's um, horrendous, actually. And the airborne bacteria that you know, come from it are very poisonous. <laughs> yeah, it sounds so very toxic. That, yeah, keeping that in the in the gallbladder is um, quite a very a traumatic experience for the body. So when the, this particular stone came out. There were a lot of stones coming out afterwards, about a hundred of them. They were equally calcified. So literally her entire gallbladder, which is, a gallbladder is about that size, uh, the entire gallbladder, which had been filled with these stones, uh, was emptied. And uh, from that day on, uh, she never had any pain in her body anymore. It's like within 24 hours, all the pain disappeared. And a lot of other things, of course, can, um, can happen uh, the whole body can rejuvenate. Um, you can you, the aging process can uh, you know be stopped or even reversed, um, and any of these aches and pains in the body, you know, you don't have to bother about that. The stiffness disappears very quickly uh, in the body, wherever it's whether it's in your feet or whether it's in your head, like all the neck pain which she had for all those years, um, you know, all her life, they disappeared. And I'm a shiatsu practitioner, and that's one of in my other um, jobs I do. Um, by touching the meridians, the energy ducts in the body, which you treat in acupuncture, they can be extremely painful, and she had a lot of pain uh, throughout the body whenever I touched any of those areas. And now I can't find a spot which is painful, and that's uh, quite, you know, that really shows that uh, so many problems are coming from there. Rheumatoid arthritis uh, is a typical illness, and I had suffered from that, that I couldn't even lift a spoon to eat my food uh, as a child. And, um, you know, clearing the liver is just a, a wonderful thing to help sufferers with it those sure kinds of joint diseases. sure sounds like it. Wow. Now, what are the different stones? What makes up these stones from the gallbladder? Yes, the stones are typically made of um, trapped... Uh, Cholesterol, cholesterol crystals. Um, cholesterol comes in two forms. The cholesterol uh, occurs in crystals, but it has to be uh, dissolved or has to be made liquid, soluble. And for that, the body needs bile salts. And the bile salts you know, come from the small intestine and enter the liver, and the liver is then making these uh, cholesterol crystals uh, into this liquid form, which then uh, becomes bile. And then the bile helps to release toxins uh, from the liver and also is the principal digestive aid to allow all the digestive processes to take place properly. And it does a lot of other things like keeping the colon clean. If you don't have enough bile, the colon, the colon uh, you know, gets uh, clogged up and um, food is sticky and it sticks to the intestinal walls. So the bile makes sure that this doesn't happen. So it's a very good preventive aid to keep the colon uh, clean. And the reasons these are so toxic is because they've been in the body for so long? And uh, they are toxic because really uh, a lot of bacteria, the, the liver is uh, trying to get rid of toxins and uh, neutralize a lot of harmful things. There are bacteria coming into the liver, there are parasites coming into the liver. And if the and they all try to um, you know be detoxified and be eliminated uh, through the bile and then you know excreted through the normal um, you know bowel movement. So if if these um, stones are sitting there, they uh, hold up the elimination of toxins and these bacteria and parasites and parasitic eggs and so all that can get trapped in these stones. Uh, so there's a lot of poison that is uh, generated from these bacteria because they're trying to break down some of that uh, mass of, of stone. And if they are, um, you know, of course, uh, that produces a lot of toxic smells and, yes. uh, and putrefaction. And uh, it's a very unpleasant thing to keep in the body. And uh, some people say, well, 
it's, um, I don't want to do this again. Uh, this was disgusting, and, you know, what came out there. But uh, it's far more disgusting keeping uh, those things in the body, trapped in the body, which is uh, not supposed to have these stones right. uh, sitting there for 20, 30, uh, 40 years Exactly. Sometimes. Very important information for people to realize about the liver and how yes. to cleanse it and what it can do for their body and their overall health. and the yes.